What's up guys and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Before we get started, I do want to apologize. I missed an episode on Friday. I was actually out of town. I got back on Thursday and then I went back out of town Thursday night uh, over basically through Friday. So I unfortunately didn't get a chance to record Friday's episode, so I apologize. I think that's the first Crack a Pack that we've missed, which feels really weird. Uh, but we're back uh, with Unstable, which is actually a really fun pack to open. Uh, if you haven't actually had the chance to play with any of the unsets, especially Unstable, in my opinion, uh, you definitely should. They're absolutely fantastic. I love them. Uh, and we will see what we get here. Of course, we're going to look at this from a pack one, pick one perspective, so we'll figure out uh, hopefully what our pack one, pick one would be if we were drafting this. So uh, our first card here is Spell Suck. It's an instant for two and two blue. Counter target spell, then assemble a contraption. Contraptions are really, really cool. Uh, they are a mechanic specific to the unstable set, and they're absolutely, just absolutely bonkers. Uh, I said absolutely like 20 times, but uh, basically they give you extra abilities sort of every turn, uh, and you cycle through three slots of them. So sometimes you won't have one, sometimes you will, uh, but they're absolutely great. Uh, again, absolutely. Uh, but this is a really good just tempo play. It's a classic counter spell, and then if you have some contraption, uh, some contraptions in your contraption deck, which is a separate deck, uh, you actually get a big bonus off of this. So it can be good. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. Uh, Stinging Scorpion, uh, a 3-2 for 4 and a black. When this creature enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Uh, these cards are really, really interesting. You might notice that it has sort of this split here uh, with a notepad kind of mark here. I don't know if you can really see that. Hopefully the will autofocus on that. Anyway, uh, basically what you can do late game is you play this and then you play a host creature, or excuse me, a, uh, the thing that goes with the host creature, uh, with this, and essentially you will be able to build up and get that ability every time something else happens. Sometimes it's maybe every time you draw a card, a creature gets minus one, minus one, or every time a creature on your side of the field dies, an opponent's creature gets minus one, minus one, something like that. Uh, these abilities were really, really powerful, I thought, uh, and so far I think I like that better than the spell suck. Uh, wrench Rigger, a 1-1 one, one for 1 red, and when it enters the battlefield, it assembles a contraption. Uh, this is a really, really just strong 1-drop, uh, overpowered in the contraption deck, I would say. Uh, and generally, you're going to get some contraptions, because there's one in every pack at least, so you're probably going to get one. Uh, and so, worst case scenario, you just get some random buff off of this. Uh, so, I really like this card. It's not, like, amazing by any means. It is still a 1-1 one, one for 1, but... It's a really easy way to assemble contraptions, which I like. I don't think I like it more than the Scorpion at this point. Uh, Old Guard is a 2-1 for 1 and a white. You can pay 1 white and tap it to tap target creature with reminder text. So anything that uh, has an italicized parentheses uh, that explains a rule that you might already know, according to this card. Um, I actually really like this card. I think it's fantastic. There's a lot of cards in here that that actually taps, so I think that's good. Uh, Wall of Fortune. A 0-4 for 1 and a blue, it has Defender. You may tap an untapped wall you control to have any player re-roll a die that that player rolled. Uh, die rolling is a really, really big part of this set, uh, which is really interesting, I think. And so uh, I actually really like this card. I think it's fantastic uh, in that sort of dice roll deck. Ideally, you want to be using it to re-roll something bad that you've rolled. Uh, but that being said, this affects any player, so you can actually tap this to... Uh, have an opponent re-roll something if they need to or if they've got something like a really really high roll You can just use this and hopefully make them re-roll. So I do like this card uh, not more than the old guard at this point though uh, Ground pounder is a 2-2 for one and a green you can pay three and a green roll a six-sided dice uh, Die excuse me, and it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the result Whenever you roll a five or a higher on a die ground pounder gains trample until end of turn This is a really over just Really, really solid 2-drop. Uh, I won't say overpowered, because you do have to pay 4 to roll the die, but uh, technically, you can do that as many times as you want, which is pretty awesome, as long as you have the mana to do it, and it can just get absolutely out of hand if you're able to roll really high. Uh, 4, 5, even 6 would be fantastic, and it gets the buff of Trample if you do get that 5 or higher. So, really, really good. I like this card a lot. Uh, it's a very aggressive card. And I, I'm kind of up there with the old guard on this one just because I like aggressive cards, especially in this format. 
Uh, secret base, it's a land, you can tap it to add one generic, uh, or you can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, but you can only spend that mana on a to cast a spell that shares a watermark with secret base. Uh, and I'm fairly certain there was a cycle of these for each, uh, each of the sort of factions in this set. Uh, this is a really interesting card. I don't like taking these in draft, uh, just generally speaking, but... I will say, if you end up late pack and you just don't have another pick, this is the perfect pick if you're very, very well sorted in a specific archetype. Uh, these cards are great. It helps you flush out your mana. So in that instance, I really like it. It is not a first pick by any means, though. Uh, Mad Science Fair Project. It's an artifact for three, and you can tap it to roll a six-sided die. On a three or lower, target player adds one generic to his or her mana pool. Otherwise, that player adds one mana of any color he or, sh he or she chooses to his or her mana pool. Uh, this card's okay. It's just ramp, but it's like not great ramp. Uh, I mean, it's fine, but it's not reliable, if that makes sense. It's always going to ramp you, but it's never going to... like You can't really count on it for a color, only because uh, half the time you're going to miss. So like, it's fine. It's not amazing. Not super exciting, I don't think. Uh, first pick is not necessarily a first pickable card, but it is our first uncommon. Three and a green for an instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment and assemble a contraption. Uh, anything that says assemble a contraption is generally going to be fairly playable. Uh, that being said, this is much more of a sideboard card, though there are a fairly high number of artifacts, I would say, in this set. Uh, so you could conceivably main deck, but generally speaking, if it doesn't have a target, it's just going to be a dead card, uh, which I don't like. So... It's okay, it's fine, uh, but again, it's classic sideboard. Uh, teacher's Pet, so a 2-1 for 1 and a white, pay 2 and a white, sacrifice Teacher's Pet, search your library for a card with Augment, Augment was what I was thinking of, not Host, uh, combine it with target host you control, then shuffle your library. Uh, I really like this card, it's a great, great enabler. Uh, I kind of it's it's really a reason to kind of be in that host augment deck only because you can literally search out anything you want assemble some really really great combos uh, I think I would take that again something I want to point out the unstable set is really just to have fun anyway uh, so might as well go for the fun stuff that would be the fun stuff I think so party crasher is a three three for four in a red it has haste you can attack with party crasher once each combat during each opponent's turn uh, really interesting card. Um, it's hyper aggressive, uh, but it does come in fairly late for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, it's, I feel like in the right position, it's great, but it, you kind of already have to be winning to make this good. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't like it as much. Uh, insight, insight. So X and two blue, assemble X contraptions. Uh, this card is really, really powerful, actually. Uh, I think I would have to take that over the teacher's pet, only because... Uh, if you're going to end up again with some contraptions anyway, this is the exact reason to be in the contraptions deck, uh, because all you have to do is pay, you pay five mana, you get three contraptions off of that, you fill all three slots just with this one card, and that is, like, absolutely insane. You just are now buffed for the rest of the game. Uh, so I really like the contraptions deck, and that's definitely the reason to be in it. We do have our full art land, we have our contraption jamming device, uh, so when you crank jamming device, target creature, uh, creatures target player controls, excuse me, and get minus one, minus one until end of turn. This is a really good one, I think. It's going to pick off a lot of low-level stuff uh, and hopefully uh, make combat a little bit easier for you. If you're shrinking their creatures on your turn, you're hopefully going to be able to swing in and get some attacks in. So I really like that. Uh, we do have another contraption, Top Secret Tunnel. Whenever you crank Top Secret tun Tunnel, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Again, a really aggressive card, fantastic in uh, a really aggressive archetype. And then if you don't know, there are beautiful tokens, foil tokens in this set. Uh, but for me, I think it's a pretty easy insight insight. Uh, please let me know by any means uh, if, if you disagree with me or anything like that. But I think this is just the most powerful card uh, for sure. I really liked Unstable though, so there are a lot of different ways I could go. But if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Uh, again, I do want to apologize for missing last Friday, but we are back. No worries. Uh, we're through the busy season, but we'll talk about that on the weekly ramble. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.